So in my internal versus external load video, we define these two different types of training load. And if you're not comfortable with what they are, then check out that video first, because now what we're going to talk about is potential ways that we can combine these two measures to try and get some sort of insight potentially about fitness or fatigue. We don't want to keep adding data collection processes or testing to our athletes. So if we can combine these measures to get more insight into our athletes, then that is a bonus for everyone. So the simplest approach may be just to look at a ratio between internal load and external load. And that is an approach that Ibi Akuba and his team previously looked into. So this is their first study on this topic. And they took individualized training impulse or ITRIMP, which is um, a heart rate, so an internal load measure from heart rate and blood lactate profile. And they divided different measures of external load, so total distance or high intensity distance into this ITRIMP for the different athletes to get their ratios. And they use this in this first study with a soccer simulation. And then they found that these ratios did significantly correlate with the measures of fitness that they also took on the athletes. So they established those relationships with measures of fitness, but what about fatigue? And in this, their next study on the topic, they actually found that these ratios the relationships became weaker under fatigue. Now that is really interesting because actually when internal and external loads uncouple, then that may be a way that we can measure fatigue and do some sort of either fatigue testing without testing, which is often um, known as invisible monitoring. And this invisible monitoring, getting more out of the data that we are already collecting without having to do fitness testing is really appealing to practitioners. And so we do see other studies that are trying to use these ratios, such as this study by Connor Durbridge, looking at the ratios during a standardized small game to try to determine if they can be used as a detector of fatigue. So there is perhaps some promise in these ratios, even if they are very simplified. And I'll come back to that in a moment. One of the issues that we sometimes see with these kinds of approaches is that actually the numbers are on different scales. So if we think about a heart rate exertion number, maybe that is somewhere around 300, say. But if we're looking then at total distance as our measure of external load, that could be 3,000, 5,000, 8,000. We want to be able to scale for the different numbers. And there is a, a ratio, again, it is a deemed an efficiency ratio that tries to take this into account. So here in this um, article in Science and Medicine in Football, Jace Delaney presents his um, work comparing internal and external loads. And this is known as the Training Efficiency Index. Though it is a ratio comparing um, internal and external load, because of this scaling issue, what Jace does is he plots the internal and external loads on a logarithmic scale. And that then scales these the numbers and then the slope of the line gives us the scaling number that we divide into the internal load. Now this means whatever measure you are using, um, you will always be able to scale it to compare against each other. And he's seen with some of the studies that he's published um, some strong evidence in support of this approach. Now Jace actually used to on his blog provide a calculator. I don't think it's currently available, but what I'll do is I'll link to a video in which Jace is explaining this concept in more detail. So if it is something that you want to uh, calculate for yourself and explore in your own sport or your own population, then you'll be able to do that along with Jace's instructions. 
Now, as I said, invisible monitoring is really appealing, but let's pause for a moment and think about these ratios. We are taking two very overarching numbers that are simplifying the complexity of a training session and then dividing them into some, something. And often this can be a limitation with a ratio that we are oversimplifying the process. And there has been a lot of um, discussion and criticism of the use of ratios, most notably, of course, the acute chronic workload ratio. And perhaps if I'm feeling brave one day, I will do a video that addresses that topic. But these ratios have come under criticism. Are they oversimplified? In reality, what we probably want to do is be able to take a whole mixture of external load metrics for an individual athlete to try and assess the relationship with internal load. And I want to share um, a case study of one way that I've approached this previously in the applied setting. We took a season's worth of internal and external load data. Internal load being um, heart rate exertion and the external load coming from player tracking uh, metrics, notably um, GPS and accelerometry derived measures. And for each individual athlete, we determined a regression equation that for that individual predicted or forecast the internal load based on their external load. So each individual athlete had a different formula that was based on last season's data. And going forward in that season, every day, based on the various combinations of external load outputs from the session, we would get an estimated uh, value for heart rate exertion that we could then compare to what they actually had. And let me show you an uh, example of that data from one athlete. So here we can see in the blue line for this individual athlete over a roughly a six months period, their predicted heart rate exertion value in blue. So based on their external load output from each session, what was predicted as their internal load. And we've plotted that then against the actual heart rate exertion that was seen. And of course, there aren't um, set points where someone suddenly goes from adapted to non-adapted. But I think there are some general trends here which I'm going to highlight. So it's absolutely not this clear cut, but just for um, ease of viewing, what we see here, we, in this is the pre-season training period. So particularly early on, but quite consistently across this period, we're seeing the actual heart rate exertion for this individual is higher than what is predicted. Now that is totally what I would expect to see because we based these regressions on a season's worth of data and in the pre-season period, players are deconditioned and therefore expect to have a higher internal load, physiological cost, to the same amount of external load, the same work done. So that's a pattern that I would expect to see. And then we move into the season and again, we see very little times where the actual is higher than the, the predicted, if anything is lower or quite frequently around about the same amount. But then we can see this shift and this trend here in October, November, December period where it reverts back to consistently having a higher actual heart rate exertion than what was predicted. Now in that case, that athlete was someone who was a, uh, a non-starter. And although they were getting top up work, this an analysis was a red flag to us that something in their fitness fatigue status was changing, it was not ideal. And actually they weren't getting the top up conditioning that that athlete needed to maintain their level of conditioning that they had earlier in the season. So this analysis served to 
provide a red flag to us for uh, the need to explore further with that individual. And again, this was all done essentially through this invisible monitoring process, whereby we were just trying to use the data we were already collecting as a bit of a fitness test. In reality, your regression um, approach is, is essentially quite a simple statistical approach. And of course, now we are seeing more and more approaches with machine learning and artificial intelligence. And there's been a couple of studies now start to use machine learning to assess the relationship between internal and external load. Now, one being this paper, again, Bartlett, John Bartlett's paper we talked about in the internal external load video. And if the most important message from this paper is it highlights the need for an individualized approach. So again, uh, or session distance, for instance, was most predictive of RPE in 36 or 41 players, whereas high speed running was more predictive in three players and meters per minute in two players. So again, whatever approach you take, it's important that you're looking at players on an individualized basis. So a few different approaches there um, in terms of combining internal and external load for you to play around with. No real clear consensus other than it should be done on an individualized basis. But there are other ways that we can try and encapsulate these, this theory or, or concept sorry, of invisible monitoring and that will be the topic of my next video.